commentary community is built on drama. Here's how that community works. People will flock to you because you're picking on a target that they don't like, but the second you either A, pick on a target that they do like, or you reveal yourself to have a flaw like, you know, a typical human being, they cannibalize each other. What's up guys, welcome to a new video. So, it's been 24 hours, still not much has been said from the Turkey Tom fans. They've kind of, you know, shut their mouths and I guess they're waiting for Turkey to actually issue a response of his own because that's what we're all waiting for. You know, we heard from Patches, we've heard from Augie, my cute little pup Augie. We've even heard from Keem on Twitter who, you know, basically lied right off the bat. And I like Keem as an entertainer, but now I, I'm going to be... <laughs> I'm gonna be straight with you guys. I don't know if he's uh, if he's purposely forgetting things, not getting uh, facts accurately, because he's doing it maliciously, or because he's just becoming old. I can't even tell with these old people anymore, right? Like when Nick says "I don't know" twenty thousand times, I don't know if it's because he's losing his mind and and is just not a competent lawyer because of the age and the alcohol. I'm not sure anymore, guys. Uh, same thing with Keem. I'm not sure what's going on if he's doing this maliciously. Let me talk about the statement he said. The statement he said is that Pyro compared himself to Kiwis in an order to manipulate us. However, the reason he compared himself to Kiwis was because that's a comparison that Keem's boy Tom made. So, it's uh, it's kind of addressing Tom's point, Keem. It's, it's not Pyro pulling this out of thin air and using it as a way to manipulate people. Uh, so, I, again, I don't know if this is an old person thing, I don't, I, I I'm, I'm hope it is, because that would not be a good look, Keemstar. I know it's not going to affect you, because you have your cult of personality, nobody cares if you lie, nobody cares what happens to you at this point in time, because you're set for life. You're a, pa I, I, you're a part of our internet culture, for better or for worse. So your existence will always live on, and you will never be cancelled. That's something that you can rely on. That's why you can get away with false pedophile accusations. However, that doesn't mean you're a good person. Um, especially Tom, after I've seen his little history. Now, I'm not really sure if he got his comeuppance, as they say, or if he was able to have a redemption arc of sorts. But I just gotta, I gotta say, from the footage I'm about to show you guys right now, Turkey Tom is objectively not a good person. And Mr. Enter has shown that he is an incompetent fool who has no idea what he's doing whatsoever. Basically, he makes poorly done reviews of cartoons and steals jokes from infinitely more successful YouTubers in an effort to gain some notoriety of his own. Says the guy who has stolen jokes and criticisms from Mars Reviews and Rebel Taxi verbatim. The word of the day, boys and girls, is projection. Seriously, dude, your critiques ripped off from Mars Reviews are painfully obvious. Except, give Mars Reviews credit, he didn't insinuate that I was a pedophile. Ah, good. A weird, lonely, socially inept man is going to be explaining what it is like to grow up like a little girl. Well, I guess their interest in My Little Pony and dating prepubescent boys will be one thing in common. Multiple times. Yo. I have a feeling that Enter's idea of a thank you video was him stripping down nude and sending people pictures of his little Johnny to the kids who pay money to see his show. With not even 300,000 subscribers for someone who has never made an animation in his entire life and has never shown that he is capable of producing one piece of good writing, either from his reviews, his atrocious book, or his somewhat pedophilic show concept. I feel like this is Enter sort of projecting, telling his audience preemptively that he's a creep or a horrible person of some kind before he gets outed for it by someone else. I mean, not saying he is necessarily, even though he has done some rather pedophilic illustrations in his past. Blow. Bro, seriously, how the fuck is this guy a good person, objectively speaking? Again, this happened two years ago, so not like it happened five years ago or a, a decade ago. No, this was in 2018. This happened in 2018. So again, I have to ask you, how? What, 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 what was the change? What was the turnaround? What was the redemption arc that I, that I missed? Did I miss the redemption arc? Uh, uh, what? I don't want to be a morality fig, you know that. Uh, but in this case, let me explain why I'm pointing this out. You guys want to support this guy off the premise that he's a good person and that he's doing right. But that doesn't work when that's a lie in itself. When he's a horrible, shitty individual. 
uh, it doesn't work. And, and that's when your morality thing doesn't pay off. See, I don't go on these amazing crusades magically on a whim like all these commentary guys do to condemn someone of something that I have no idea whether or not it's true or not and it's all just conjecture. I don't run with it and I don't state it as fact or even leave enough room for somebody to actually think that it's fact. This document probably never thought I'd actually respond to it piece by piece because you know, the, the majority of the messages, they're so fucking bad to look at. This document is cowardly. I mean, like, the ending is no exception. Like, they, they don't even definitively state if I groomed anyone. They just leave enough room for people to draw that conclusion themselves without openly saying. This is what these commentary weasels typically do. These exposed channels typically do this as well. They use conjecture. They leave a lot of things out that's convenient for them. <laughs> They go ahead and they just leave enough room for you to come to that conclusion. I think the sneakiest thing and the most womanly thing about all this crap, and I've seen a lot of you guys do it. I've seen a lot of you commentary guys do it. I've seen a lot of you exposed channels do it. You don't state something that you're trying to paint out as fact because you don't want to be held liable for it. That's, that's why you don't state it, right? So you could spend five to ten minutes trying to imply that someone is a pedophile at the end of the day though you're not gonna say it because you guys are bitches <laughs> that's just all it is you're bitch made and you don't want to state it instead you're gonna spend five to ten minutes trying to hammer that point in for people to reach that conclusion for themselves which is why you always say well i'm going to let you guys draw that conclusion for yourself <laughs> god bottom line turkey tom not a good person doesn't really act on good fate from what we've seen i don't know what's changed in two years that has convinced people to think otherwise now but if you guys want to try to push this guy as some kind of credible individual that is totally doing this out of the goodness of his heart has no motives behind this whatsoever would definitely not act in bad faith yeah sure believe him and continue to say that his points hold up what you do with agreeable people is you get them to figure out and they have a hard time with this too if you ask a disagreeable person what what he wants, say, or she wants, they'll tell you right away. They, they know. It's like, this is what I want, and this is how I'm going to get it. But agreeable people, especially if they're really agreeable, are so agreeable that they often don't even know what they want. Because they're so accustomed to living for other people, and to finding out what other people want, and to trying to make them comfortable, and so forth, that it's harder for them to find a sense of their own desires as they move through life.